So since I've done my last update video, which was only last night, I've made a lot of progress. Let's take a look. Holy shit. Yes, all the floor is gone. All out of the house. Well, it's out of the kitchen. It's in, a, in tote bins where it's going to be stored for as long as it takes for me to get rid of it in a correct and safe manner. But that's besides the, besides the point. I just pulled up the problem section of flooring we have here. Let's take a look. So this section of plywood was rotted all the way through. Um, there's no saving that. Uh, but you can see that the floorboards are still, uh, the subfloor is still intact. This is a rosin paper that they used to use. Actually, they still use this stuff. It's still pretty, uh, pretty relevant. But this, the old dishwasher was leaking for a very long time and nobody noticed, apparently. Um, this was two dishwashers ago, long before I bought the place. Um, but yeah, this rosin paper is in good shape. Um, you see to figure out how thick this plywood really is, and I'm going to go to the hardware store, go to the, the the blue store or the orange store, whichever one's closer, or whichever one has what I need. I need plywood that is exactly three quarters of an inch thick. Technically, five eighths, I believe, is the. Uh, but this stuff is three quarters of an inch. If I can find a three quarter inch plywood, I don't care how much it costs, I need to buy a full four by eight sheet, unfortunately. But that's all the floor we're gonna replace. The rest of it is totally fine. There's no need to replace any additional flooring. Once I get that patched in, I'm gonna work on um, cutting and fitting my quarter ply. Once the quarter ply is in place, we're going to go ahead and uh, start doing some paint work. I'm going to do some repair work to the, to the cabinets. I want to do all that before I put in the finished floor. That makes more sense to me anyway. Touch up some walls. I'm not going to bother filling in this. I'm going to just get a, a metal blank plate and that's, that's how we're going to fix that. I'll paint that, touch it up. I'm just going to put a blank there, a stainless steel blank. So, moving forward, and that's what matters. Yeah. So I had to remove more plywood because it turns out the water worked its way that way, and uh, dangerously delent. Let me, let me show you what I what I mean. Well, now it's outside. Forget it. Uh, <laughs> totally rotted out the plywood and. About this far, you can see where the water staining is. In fact, the water went all the way over here at one point. Um, so that dishwasher had been leaking for a number of years, and they just, you know, just let it do its thing. Um, the good news is, the pl the cabinets are built directly onto the subfloor and not on the underlayment. The subfloor survived. It's good and solid. Uh, so there's no no water no rotting there. Um, that's good because I can't replace that easily. Um, so all the all the stuff that, that was damaged we're replacing. Um, and I'm glad I I'm glad I took a, a closer look at it and found you know, the water damage is a little more extensive than I had hoped. Um, so now we are at a point where we're going to start cutting plywood and putting it in to replace the damaged plywood. And I think that might be might be it for today. Um, I did a lot of work, and I think it's enough for today. Actually, no. What I want to do today is I want to re-secure the. I, I'm going to mark off where these um, floor joists are, and that I've got it all exposed, and I can make lines that shows where the nails need to go, where the screws need to go, and uh, let me go get some spray paint, and uh, I'm just going to paint little dots where they where it needs to be and um, it's easier to it's easier to figure this out when it's all apart and you can actually see where the joists are than when it's not you know what I'm saying okay so we've got the new wood patched in now I have driven screws next to every nail I found now there's a squeak right here which I haven't quite worked out yet and but for the most part 
nothing, no squeaks. Yeah, a little bit there. Okay, all right. So, okay, now there's a squeak here, but it's not worth ripping up the whole floor to, for that. So, I mean, I did eliminate a lot of the noise by, again, driving in the screws. And uh, that is the correct way to fix floor squeaks for the most part. Um, I noticed that in some spots it was actually driving the floor down. So the floor had actually buckled a little bit. But some of these, no some of these squeaking noises are actually coming from the, uh, the cross braces underneath the blocking that they used to use. And, um, and that just occurs as the beam deflects as you put weight on it. Not much I can do about that. Well, yeah, there is. I could rip those cross braces out. So let's do this. So there's a squeak right here. Let's grab a screw. And let's try to eliminate it. So what was that? Right there. So let's just drive a screw. Oh, I think I see a nail. That's why. Squeak is gone. Just like that. So the trick is finding every one of those freaking nails. But now that squeak is gone. All right, let's find another one. I think I found one right here. Oh, right there. I've got to pinpoint where it's coming from. Find the offending nail. Oh, I see it's not. It doesn't want to come back. So when I put the um. When I put the new quarter ply down, that's going to be held down with uh, inch and a half, or I think they're inch long, uh, quarter by inch, side by each, um, pneumatic staples. And uh, those will not go through the underlayment. So you want to make sure that you get these issues solved now before you start putting in finished goods, because uh, you won't be able to fix it later. And there's a good chance that I drove in so many screws that I'm gonna hit some nail heads and screw heads as I as I staple the uh, the underlayment down. But again, so that squeak is gone. Pretty much, it's as good as we're gonna get it. Not funny. Yeah, I think we've got it. All. Okay, so there's some. Something going on over here. So I might drive in a couple more screws and that'll solve it. Now, the other thing I noticed, um, the plywood that I bought to patch this up um, is just maybe a 16th inch uh, thinner. Oh, another one. I'll have, to, I'll have to take a good look at these nails. Every nail head should have a screw next to it and that'll prevent that screw from making, or that nail from ever making noise again. Anyway, um, so what I'm gonna do, like I said, there's a 16th inch discrepancy there. Um, what I'm gonna do about that is I'm going to grab my, um, my orbital sander. I might actually use my pad sander, I'm not sure which one. But I'm going to try to chamfer the transition so it's not as striking as it is now. I mean, my foot gets caught on it. It's just a little, just like a sixteenth of an inch, if that. Even though they're basically the same thickness. Um, whatever. <laughs> modern plot, modern wood isn't what it's advertised as. All right. So while I had the whole kitchen torn a bit, torn to bits, I decided to make some repairs to the cabinets. Um, I would say like sometime in the 1980s, um, they installed the dishwasher in here for the first time. And to do that, they actually cut um, a cabinet out. So they would have taken what appears to be a chainsaw and, they, and they cut this board up to about here. Then they cut across. Look at that nice shitty cut. And then they did the same thing to this side and they did it. They butchered it. They really butchered it. Um, they left some structural issues um, over here. Now, because this top board right here, or this, this board where the drawers are set into, is um, the grain goes this way. 
So what they did is they, when they installed it, the cabinets, or built them in place, they would cut the holes in for each drawer. But that leaves, um, that left a structural issue right about here because it's going, the grain's going this way. And how can I describe this? Well, basically, the board was um, going the wrong way in a vertical fashion. That doesn't make any sense. But anyway, point being, the, the wood split in multiple places because it wasn't capable of holding any, any, any weight or any, any uh, tension or anything. So uh, anyway, repaired all that, tore it all out, um, re rebuilt this whole drawer support. And um, again, that door is now on a new piece of wood. That was cut at an angle which is why I had to put the aluminum trim there in the first place. And yes, the aluminum trim is going back. That is a custom thing I did and I thought it looked so freaking good. Um, I was very happy with that. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is put another screw right here. Oh, uh, there's a nail. You can buy that nail, I bet. Anyway, we'll fix that in a minute. Um, I'm gonna have to cut the rest of this up. I think I'm going to have to cut the rest of this out with the with the sawzall. Um, we'll see how that goes. I'm not really looking forward to that because we're going to lose about a quarter of an inch in height once I put the Luan down or the um, you know, the stuff I'm using. So we're going to lose a good quarter of an inch, and I don't want to leave it like that. So we're going to take about we're going to cut this all out, just get rid of it, and I'm going to put a piece of wood. Um, screwed, yeah, trust me, it's gonna be, it's gonna be golden when I'm done with it. Um, but this sits in just perfect now. There's no, it's not on level, uneven, and, and wonky ass. It sits perfectly. So I gotta pull this thing right back out again, stuff it in the living room, and continue on building. But I'm done for tonight. That's it for today. Yay. And uh, no more banging, screwing, and oh, that sounded nasty. But no, uh, <laughs> hey, anyway, so I've got to go ahead and get some, um, I'm going to do some uh, wood filler to fill in the gaps, get that ready for paint, which will happen after the Luan's down. I keep calling it Luan, it is quarter ply birch, whatever. Okay, moving on. It's not over till it's over, folks. I'm still chasing down four squeaks. I want to be able to walk across the entire floor and not hear a single squeak. I think I'm good. I mean, there comes a point where, you know, diminishing returns and all that. It's an old house, it's going to squeak. Um, but since I have the floor torn apart, now is the only chance I'll ever have to fix these squeaks. This floor, my God, this floor was so bad. If you watch the earlier videos, um, it was every step, every step was that. But I have punctured so many screws into this section of the floor, I don't know. Right here, it seems to be very stubborn, but it's improved a lot. Just look for the screw heads, or the nail heads. And that's where you want your screws. But God help the poor son of a bitch that has to get this floor up in about 20 years. <laughs> no, really, I feel so bad for that person. Oh my God. What the fuck? What did he do? Well, that's why I used quarter ply. Hmm? Yeah, I mean, you could, if you're going to do a vinyl composite floor, you can take up, you can take it down to the down to the joist if you want to, and then put yourself down a nice. Um, I forget what the grade is, but there's plywood has different grades, and one of the grades is a finished surface on the top, but basically sheathing rated or flooring rated. And that's a floor you can put, um, you can put your uh, your vinyl composite on that directly, and uh, and it's totally fine. Um, the problem is, 
if somebody decides to change the flooring, they're going to have a hell of a time. They may have to rip the whole thing up. And um, if you screw it down, it just makes the job that much more difficult. If it's nailed down, like the section here it was all nailed in place, so I just popped it up, no big deal. But um, if it's screwed down, oh my god, poor, poor guy. Um, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, so what I did, or what I will be doing, is I'm using quarter ply. It's sure ply is the product name. And um, that will be stapled down. So let's say 3, 10, 15 years from now, we decide to modernize the kitchen or let's say I sell the house and um, somebody else decides to modernize the kitchen and put in fancy, fancy, dancy tile. All they've got to do is tear up the quarter ply, which is stapled down. Staples do come out with enough uh, coercion. They will be, they, they can be removed. And then you put down a layer of hardy backer or Schluter board and you put that down following the manufacturer's destructions and then you put your tile on top of that bingo tile floor um so that's the, so the 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 sacrificial layer if you will will be the uh the quarter ply now the problem that you face if you do something like that is you're going to raise the height of the floor by another quarter of an inch um you know, it can be done, but the results may not be what you want. <laughs> they may not be anywhere near what you want. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind, I guess. Um, as for this, yeah, I'm going to have to take my sander and try to, try to smoothen it out. So when I staple the quarter ply down, it'll, it'll be... I'm going to use some uh, some wood filler in a few spots. I'm thinking, um, yeah, maybe not. I don't think I need it. I was thinking of using it to make like a ramp to even further smoothificate the uh, the union there, and then sand it. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We shall see. Well, that's it for tonight. It's twelve o'clock. It's bedtime. Way past bedtime. And uh, I got a big day tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow is paint. No, quarter ply, then paint. So quarter ply goes down tomorrow, and then we paint. We paint the, the cove mold, the cove mold. We paint the um, baseboards. We paint all the low stuff. Uh, all the upper stuff, all the top stuff has been done. I got to do the baseboards. I got to do <clears throat> the repaired sections of my cabinetry. That all has to be painted to match. I'm loving how that dishwasher fits in that opening. But like I said, I'm gonna have to cut the rest of that out at top, up on the top there. Hey, welcome back, Bishop's PCM World. Um, I'm talking to you live from the construction zone. Currently, this is the state of our construction. It is Monday, April 26. It's around 10 o'clock in the morning. And um, things are looking up over here. Um, I will pass the camcorder back over to Brandon. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. All right, so we've got the plywood down for the most part. I just have two more pieces to do, the part under the dishwasher, and i got to do that over there. So, And then we're going to staple this down. This is going to take hours. Just me, an air compressor, and a staple gun. You know, just every X you see needs a staple. That's how this goes down. Um, I did put a layer. Um, I don't think I filmed this, but I put a layer of rosin paper underneath all this. That is a slip layer. Um, it actually serves a purpose. It's not necessary. <coughs> I don't think it's necessary, but what it will do 
is it will allow the plywood to expand and contract I call it, it's called a slip layer because it'll expand and contract at a different rate than the 70 year old plywood underneath it. Um, and because there's still adhesive residue on the plywood, um, I don't want that residue to stick, if you will, to the underside of this plywood, which could cause noise and other things. So I'm just laying the pieces in place, getting them cut, and then I'll staple it all in one shot. Um, and there's a sequence to that. Um, you're supposed to start at one corner and then work your way diagonally to the other corner. Um, I'm hoping that it doesn't shift as I'm doing that. Um, what I am going to probably do is probably start in the middle actually and then work my way out. Because this piece is warped and once it's stapled down it's, it's not going anywhere. So um, I have to put a piece of, um, i got to cut a piece of uh, rosin for underneath this. And, uh, and then I got to cut that piece right there. Then we'll cut the dishwasher piece. And once we get this stapled down, we can start putting, in, in theory, we could start putting glue down. But I want to paint all the baseboards before I do anything like that. Um, that's the plan. So I'm going to get my painter's cap on and, uh, and do that. So that's, this is what it's... This, this piece right here, though, I was really dreading. Um, like I said, I don't think I said this before, but it's uh, a lot of complicated cuts. And I got it, you know what, I got it as well as I could. Um, I am going to use wood filler um, in a few spots. Um, I'm hoping that uh, that'll work in my favor. But I'm going to put some wood filler down here in this gap here. I don't want that a gap. It's, that's too much of a gap um, for the material that I'm using. It's way too much of a gap, so it's going to show. Uh, we can't have that. So wood filler goes down there, and then I'm going to probably... Um, I'm, what I'm going to definitely do is I'm going to put some quarter round moldings in a few spots. You know, just for decorative purposes, maybe. I don't know. Um, I've got to cut a new hole for the water line for the fridge. I had the water line over here somewhere. I want to route it underneath this cabinet. I marked it off on the wall. I'm going, to, I'm going to route it under the cabinet and through the back of the cabinet. So I'll take my sawzall and I'll cut a notch out so that the water line can go that way. Um, I think that'll be a lot nicer than it was. In a new construction, you would have, um, you could put a water faucet or a, um, a shutoff valve in the wall. Unfortunately, this house, I, can't, I don't have that option. I really don't. Um, I don't like this outlet. It's not going anywhere, but... Okay, we got the plywood down. So this is, uh, we're pretty close to being able to put the floor in. Um, but what I have to do first, uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait until tomorrow morning to start spreading glue. So what I'm gonna do today and into, into the night is I'm going to get some wood filler and I'm going to fill in some of the gaps. So I'm trucking along as fast as I can. Well, not really as fast as I can, but I want to make sure that now that the cats are out of the house, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I want, I don't want them to wear out their welcome <laughs> for where they are. So I want to get this done quick. Repainted the baseboards, everything like a foot down, casework stuff like that, all painted up nicely. Um, we've got this is sand, I sanded all the seams. I think it's nice and tight. Um, anytime you're painting and you're about to put VC tile down, um, if you get a drop of paint, you want to make sure you wipe it up quick. 
or the brush or whatever, because if you don't, that paint droplet will show up in the finished product. <laughs> Trust me, I know. It's happened. <laughs> it's happened to me before. Um, so yeah, all the baseboards and the bottom part of the trim. Now, I got the paint that I'm using. It's an exact match for what was originally used. Not originally, but, but used before. Um, when, whatever, was on the, whatever was on the trim when I bought the house, that's the color I stuck with. Now there's about a bazillion shades of white <laughs> and um, to get the exact match, what I did is I, I took a drawer from the cabinet and brought it to Home Depot and said, match this. And they said, sure thing. And they did, they got it perfect, dead on. So I think I talked about this in, an, in another video a while back. But I painted a small section of this cabinet frame here and I asked Amelia to take a look at it and tell me where I painted. She could not figure it out. That's how I knew I had the right color. So <laughs> that was a that was a lucky a lucky find. Sometimes when they mix paint, they don't get it right. They get it close, but they don't get it exact. No, they they got it exact. Um, all the framework around the dishwasher has been modified and fixed. I cut out the top section probably can I'm sure you can tell right now There's, there was a about that much wood um, under typically well normally uh, a dishwasher opening isn't going to have um, there shouldn't be anything above it as far as woodwork it should go right up against the bottom of the counter so that is um, that is how it's going to be done and uh, what I'm going to do is raise the unit up to its correct height. Uh, before it was lowered down as, as low as it could go. And now with a quarter inch plywood, it wouldn't fit anymore. So I had to cut that out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to remake my um, aluminum edges, my aluminum trim. I'm going to have to remake these to be the uh, full length. From the bottom of the of the uh, what would you call that a style? From the bottom of the frame all the way to the top. That's that's what it's going to be now. And there won't be a piece on the top anymore. There's no need for it. So um, so I got to get new aluminum. Um, that'll be like one of the last things I do. We got to get this floor in first. And for the first time ever, the dishwasher will have a finished floor under it. Um, it was actually sitting on the one that was in the house when I bought it. Was, this was the jankiest setup I've ever seen. They, they, they used a chainsaw or whatever to cut the cabinet out. And because these cabinets are built directly on the subfloor, there was nothing under the dishwasher. It was just sitting on the subfloor. When the rest of the flooring was a good, you know, three quarters inch higher than what the dishwasher was sitting in. So the dishwasher was shoved in and dropped in place. I mean, it was it was janky as all get up, but it worked. I mean, it, it did work. It served a purpose, but that's not how I'm gonna leave it that way. I'm not leaving it that way. We're gonna do this right. Um, anyway. So, this is gonna be nice. I'm really getting excited about this. Um, I'm just thinking about what it's going to look like when I'm done and I'm just getting all giddy and excited and I just cannot wait to see the finished product. I mean, it's gonna be a checkerboard floor. You've got the 50s, the original 50s curtains, which were in this house since the 50s. You've got that spaceship looking light fix. I mean, it just, oh, just hits me right where it needs to. I'm very excited about what this is going to be like. Now, unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to put a rug in front of this door. I don't think a rug's ever going to fit there again. I mean, there just isn't enough clearance. Let me just be honest, there's just not enough clearance there. But seeing all this woodwork painted looking nice, I mean, that, that, that in itself is an improvement. Um, it really is. It was looking kind of dingy. And I, I had never, I'd never painted uh, any of the base, baseboards. I just never did. 
when I bought the place, I didn't bother painting any of them because I didn't think I needed to. I just cleaned them up and that was it. But now that we're doing a floor, let's just go all out. Well, that's going to be the end of this, the end of this video. Stay tuned for part three. There is a bump right here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's something trapped under here. <gasps> Shit. Is there? Oh, there's something here. Oh, well. <laughs> Whatever. The cabinet's going to be sitting here anyway. I don't care. I mean, I do care, but I, I, I just noticed it. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, there's something there. Oh, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Based on where my, where these lines are, I think that's going to be under the cabinet. So, oh, you suck. I wonder what it could be. I can't rip it up. There's no way. Uh, that would be a nightmare. Oh, you son of a bitch. There's something here. Oh, no! Well, it's going to be there forever because I'm not tearing it apart. <laughs> oh my god, I wonder what it could be. Something got under there. Oh my god. Well, let's check the measure. Let's make sure because... So, the cabinet... It goes there. Is well, the base of it? It's twenty, twenty-one inches, and then the whole thing is twenty-four inches. So twenty-one. If it's twenty-one inches or less, I don't care. If it's twenty-four inches or more. I'm gonna have to, you know what I could do? <clears throat> yeah, it's gonna sit right. We're gonna, you know what we're gonna have to do? I hate to say it, but we gotta cut this out. I can't leave that there. We've gotta cut this out. Well, now's the time to fix it, right? We're gonna cut it out. I'm gonna cut a little patch piece to put back in there and, we'll, and it'll be fine. But, <laughs> you son of a bitch. You son of a bitch. That's all right, we'll, we'll cut it out. Uh, let me get a saw. We're gonna use a whole saw. It's probably just a little piece of wood from when I was trimming. fix this. Now, all we got to do now, <laughs> all we have to do now is we're going to staple this back down. I'm going to vacuum this up real good. We'll staple it back down, problem solved, Now put some wood filler around it. But <clears throat> this is all it takes, my friends, to fuck up a floor. That's it. Just, just, just that. That's all it takes. <laughs> Lesson learned. Wood filler, and I'll take care of it. Son of a bitch. Well, <laughs> could have been worse, right? I could be gluing right now. I could be spreading glue all over the place, and then I find it an oh shit, it's too late. Look at the bright side. Nice. Now, because of where that is located, I mean, the best place for a mistake like that is probably under a fridge or stove or a cabinet, um, but it is within the 24 inches 
of the cabinet's kit panel. Um, I mean, not kit panel, but the uh, the face of the cabinet. So let's say, and well, it's just beyond. So the cabinet is 24 inches deep, um, but chances are nobody is going to be. It's not like it's in the main main action alley of traffic or anything like that. So it's not going to be a big deal. Um, we'll have to touch it with a sander, maybe, maybe not. Um, when I spread the glue. But I did put the, um, I packed my uh, Minwax stuff in there pretty good. I'm using interior exterior uh, wood filler. It is supposed to be somewhat weatherproof, I guess. I don't know. So it should be able to withstand the test of time. We'll see. <sighs> All right. Well, it is 9.30 and I'm going to bed. Well, I'm not going to bed. Get ready for bed. Take a break. Relax. Watch the TV. But that, now you know, you don't have to pull the whole freaking sheet up. You can just, if the piece is small enough and you can isolate it, you can use a hole saw <laughs> to save a whole lot of time. Um, my thought, I was thinking, I wasn't thinking hole saw when I, when I realized what I had to do. I was thinking circular saw. I was going to cut it in a square. And then I'm thinking, wait a minute, it's a small fragment. I can capture it with a hole saw, no big deal. Um, sure enough, that's all it took. So tomorrow morning, I will be spreading the glue. Takes about, I think a half an hour, 45 minutes for that to set up and become usable. The stuff goes on white and when it's clear, becomes a tacky surface and uh, you can walk on it just minimally before we do the glue though we got to set our chalk lines we got to find the center of the room in both directions and then spread the glue once the glue is clear we'll be able to see the chalk line now, i've watched professional flooring guys i mean where i work every year they replace a couple of floors it's kind of a neat process that the professionals use they actually have a machine a drivable machine. It's the coolest, like a Zamboni that just tears up flooring. Uh, it's the coolest thing. It's this machine that they drive around like a go-kart and it has this vibrating blade in the, or oscillating blade that vibrates and hits the floor. It usually it's designed for concrete floors. And what it does is as they're driving this machine, it's just tearing the whole floor up. I watched them do the, our office used to have vinyl, vinyl tile flooring. And I watched the guy do this, do our office. It took him, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. I kid you not. The room that we have is the size of a classroom or half the size of a classroom. Just picture your typical public school classroom and divide it in half. That's what we have for an office for, for three people. And this guy just drives this machine into the door it's a narrow little thing and just tears the whole freaking floor up down to bare concrete in 15 minutes. I was like, no way. I want to try that. <laughs> you can't do that on, on a wood floor because it would just tear the floor right up. But anyway, on that note, let's see what happens tomorrow. I wonder if I find another one of those. Uh oh. <laughs> Wouldn't that just make my freaking day? And I pulled these up too, just to confirm. They must have, you know what I think it happened is it probably got sucked in. I don't know, when I pulled it up, who knows? I didn't see it. No, no, no I see it. I'm glad I found, I'm glad I, I'm glad I found that. Let me tell you, because if I found that while I was putting the floor in, guess what? It's there forever, I'm not fixing it. Ugh, that was luck. Luck is not having it at all, but a little paint drip. Yeah, luck would be not having that happen at all, but backup luck is finding it before it becomes a problem. So, this is exciting. <laughs>